when we look back on our lives, we can see so many difficult times that the Lord has brought us through. Think with me for a moment back over the years of your life, the personal hardships that God has strengthened you and carried you through, the national crises that we have lived through and come out the other end as we've continued trusting in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Do you remember the terrorist threats of recent years? The petrol crisis, the great storm that I keep talking about in 1987. Perhaps you endured hardships during the miners' strikes of 1984 and 1974. Do you remember the winter of discontent when we had no electricity and had to light candles uh, to uh, see in the dark and put an extra blanket on the bed if you only had electric heating? What about the drought of 1975-76 when we were filling up our pots and pans? Or who can remember the winter of uh, the snows? 1985 or perhaps you want to go back as far as 1947 and the great snow of that year we've lived through the Falklands crisis some of us will have lived through the Second World War who are listening uh, and maybe one or two even remember as children the Great Depression these were testing times but the Lord our God brings us through and we are right to trust in him at all times and in every way. We remember the promise of Jesus, I am with you always. No matter what's happening, Jesus is with you. Jesus is with you now. Jesus is with you today. And may that fact encourage your faith and strengthen your hearts. One of my favorite preacher's stories is of the man who lived on the banks of the Mississippi at the time of a huge flood when the waters were 30 feet deep and stretched for hundreds of miles and the preacher has to climb up onto the roof of his house to escape the flood waters and in his desperation he cries out to God in prayer to rescue him and just as he finishes praying the rain stops the clouds clear the sun shines and the water begins to recede and for the rest of his life the preacher wherever he goes to preach is telling them again and again how how God rescued him from the great flood well after many years he dies and goes to heaven and the angel who meets him at the gates and shows him around explains to him that on Sunday there is a service and as he has served God faithfully for 30 years he has three minutes to tell everyone in heaven about the goodness of God in his life and the preacher replies I know what I'm going to say I'll tell them how God rescued me from the great flood and the angel smiles and says before you do so let me remind you that Noah will be in the congregation nothing takes God by surprise God has been this way before God knows the end from the beginning if we listen to him, if we follow his advice, if we put our trust in him, we will be kept safe, we will be rescued, we will be provided for, for all that is necessary within the will and purposes of God. Okay, if you have your Bible, please turn with me to Genesis chapter 8, and we're going to look at the section that begins in verse 18. I do encourage you to open your Bibles to follow with me as I explain this story to you. It'll help you to understand it better. It'll help you to remember it and make it part of your consciousness. And let God's word speak. Let's not just be people who listen to people. Let's be people who listen to the word of God. So in Genesis chapters 8 and 9, we see how Noah survives the flood. And having now come out of the ark, it is a time of thanksgiving and of deepening relationship with God. The key word in this section is covenant. A covenant is a serious, sacred promise. It is a formal, legal relationship based on trust, based on good faith. And here we see 
Noah and God in covenant relationship together. And as we begin to uh, loosen the lockdown of the coronavirus, and as we start to come out of this present crisis, let us remember to give thanks to God who has walked with us through all that we have gone through and to deepen our relationship with him again. Notice three things, covenant principles, covenant practices, covenant promises. First, the covenant principles in chapter 8, verses 20 to 22. Noah's relationship with God is marked and remembered by a sacrifice and a meal. Notice that Noah gives thanks by building an altar and by sacrificing clean animals. And it's important that we get uh, this point that it is the clean animals that are sacrificed. God receives part of that sacrifice and worship through the smoke and the smell of the, the burning meat on the altar. And the rest of the meat would be eaten by Noah and his family. This is Noah's covenant meal. And it is a timeless covenant with all of humanity that follows. In the New Testament, we think of another covenant, a new covenant, where the clean, pure, sinless sacrifice of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, dying on the cross for you and for me, is the means of our relationship with God being set right and deepened. God receives his sacrifice for us and we are enabled to deepen our relationship with him and we symbolize this in a symbolic meal we call it communion where the bread and wine represent the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in this way we are to give thanks to God for saving us through faith in Jesus Christ through his life death and resurrection so let me ask you again today, are you trusting in Jesus for the forgiveness of your sin and for eternal life and to be released one day into his eternal kingdom? Do you thank God for Jesus and for saving you by regularly sharing in this covenant meal of communion with other Christians? If we're grateful for God being there, in our darkest and most needy times. Let us show it, uh, not only by what we do, but by the, the way that we live. Let us be covenant people. Secondly, we have the covenant practices in chapter 9, verses 1 to 7. Notice how this covenant relationship involves both positive and negative responsibilities on behalf of Noah. In verse 1, Noah is given the Genesis Commission again. It is reissued to be fruitful and increase and to fill the earth, to subdue it, to be its master, to be its uh, guardian and caretaker. Humanity has been given both spiritual and physical encouragement to prosper and to be the Lord's key servants on the planet responsible before God for all of its biological and ecological life. The scriptures then go on in verse 4 to encourage us to value life, symbolized in an attitude towards blood and bloodshed that regards life as sacred. We are told here especially that we are accountable to God for human life. For all human life is in the image of God. All lives matter. It does not matter what shade the color of your skin. It does not matter what country you were born in. It does not matter what culture you were brought up in. All lives matter. All life is sacred. Everyone is precious. And every life that is taken unnecessarily, we will need to answer to, to God. Where does this leave us as we apply this truth to our world today? A world that is still suffering 
racism, a world where there are still wars, a world where there are unnecessary abortions, where there is talk of euthanasia to remove the elderly, where there is starvation, where there is murder. God is love, but God is also our judge. And in the New Testament, Jesus says that all of our Father's laws are encapsulated uh, in these two truths, that we must love God and love others as ourselves. If we want to maintain our close relationship with our Creator, we need to recognize both the positive implications of His freeing us to uh, act responsibly upon this planet, but also the negative implications that there are things that we must not do. And if we do those things, we bring the wrath of God upon us. Are we people who will do things God's way? Are we people who are living in accordance with the teaching of the Bible? This is how we show our gratitude and our thanksgiving and our understanding of God's salvation in how we live. Faith without works is dead, says the New Testament. Let us be people who are covenant people whose covenant and deep relationship with God is seen in the way that we treat the people around us. And then third, we have the covenant promises in chapter 8, verses 8 to 17. And one of the, the great promises of Noah's covenant is that God says he will never flood the whole earth again. And the sign of that promise is in the rainbow. It's interesting to see rainbow pictures in the windows uh, colored by the children of our community. In recent times, the rainbow symbol has been borrowed first by South Africa. Uh, remember Nelson Mandela and the Rainbow Nation as they sought to bring together people of different colors. Then more recently by the LGBT movement and now uh, to remember the NHS in this time of crisis. But for Christians, it's one enduring meaning is to focus our thoughts on our covenant-keeping God, a God who keeps his promises. And the rainbow is the promise that God will not judge the world by flooding it ever again, not completely flooding it. I'm not talking there uh, just about local floods. Remember also in the New Testament, in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7, the Bible tells us that God will still judge humanity for its sin. That in the future this earth will be cleansed and renewed, not by water, but by fire. I wish I had time to unwrap some of this today, uh, but I know that you don't concentrate for as long uh, on a video as you would if you were actually here in the church with me. So if you want to ask questions about this, come back to me. Uh, I'd love to answer your questions and go deeper on so much more of the truths that we have in these scriptures. But by eating the sacrificial meal, the covenant meal. Noah was accepting the covenant. He was committing himself to his side of this relationship of good faith and of trust. And whenever Christians take communion, we there renew our commitment to our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. We renew our commitment to our promise-keeping God and also to keep our promises to him, to live in accordance with his ways and his teaching. God always keeps his commitments to us. He expects us to keep our commitments to him. Are we promise keepers? Let's be promise keepers. Let's be people who are not only known to be people of the word, of the word of God, the Bible, but people who uh, keep their word, who mean what they say, who do what they say, who put into practice what they preach. One last thing. I want us to remember before we finish that there was only one door in the ark, one way in and one way out. And it was that one door through which 
Noah and all the animals, all who were rescued from the flood, had to enter. The enormous elephant and the tiny ant all went in through the same door. The lion, the king of the beast, and the donkey, the humble servant of humanity, all went in through the same door. There was only one way, one way in and one way out. In the New Testament, in John chapter 10, verses 7 to 9, Jesus says, I am the door. Uh, I know many of our translations have their gate, but actually in Greek, it is the door. And Jesus uses that phrase, I am the door, twice. And some Christians think that he, on his second occasion, has in mind Noah and the ark. Because he says that those who enter through him into the kingdom of heaven will come in and then go back out and find pasture. When we are saved, we are not only brought out of sin, but we are preserved and released and brought in to the kingdom of God. But there is only one way into God's kingdom, only one door, faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. This relationship is a personal relationship. We are to deepen it into covenant. We are to be people who know God's word uh, and who God can trust to keep our word to him. If you've not yet put your faith and trust in Jesus, we'll put up a, a little prayer at the end of this message as we regularly do. And we encourage you to pray that prayer and give your life to Jesus today. To take that first step of Christian faith. But then to go on in faith. To deepen your relationship. To recognize that God wants covenant with you. Covenant that is symbolized in baptism and communion. And as God keeps his word to you, to me, let's keep our word to him. God bless.